good morning everyone and uh, again this is the part 2 of uh, again ECG and in the previous lecture I left somewhere when where I was talking about uh, PR interval and I was talking about uh, uh, that the PR interval is like from 0.12 to 0.2 seconds or you can say 120 to 200 milliseconds so CRV are going systemically like P wave then QPR interval so uh, I show you this normal ECG and uh, you can say like the revision which uh, we had done before like P wave which is atrial depolarization and then PR interval right I told you how to count the heart rate so we call it as we call something called as say sinus tachycardia now remember I am saying tachycardia which means the heart is beating for more than 100 beats per minute right but I am putting the word sinus so remember sinus tachycardia means that the heart is beating more than 100 beats per minute but the um, the impulse or the electrical activity is still arising from the sinus or you can say SA node or simply the rhythm is sinus rhythm so sinus tachycardia describes sinus rhythm Um, at a rate of over 100 beats per minute right easy concept then something called as sinus bradycardia now see again I'm using the word sinus so which means like uh, the rhythm is still arising or the impulse is still arising from the SA node so in this one the rate of uh, uh, at a rate of less than 100 beats per minute right so now uh, sinus arrhythmia now see basically this is also sinus arrhythmia like because the normal heart rate is between 60 to 100 so when the heart rate is less than 60 or more than 100 so sorry this should be 60 sorry not 100 so when the heart rate is less than 60 or more than 100 of course it is it means it is like arrhythmia so sinus arrhythmia uh, sinus arrhythmia is uh, is the term used to describe uh, the normal variation in heart rate with with respiration okay so now remember what is sinus arrhythmia normally whenever we do breathing respiration normally okay the heart rate increases on inspiration okay whenever we do inspiration our heart rate increases and whenever we do expiration you can check in yourself take a deep deep inspiration you will found like your heart is slowing down when you'll expire your heart rate will increase so this is a uh, arrhythmia a change in rhythm but this is called a sinus arrhythmia and it is a normal thing okay a very easy way to remember this thing is like remember increase starts from i n and inspiration starts from i n so inspiration increases heart rate inspiration increases heart rate normally physiologically right so now guys what is the thing we have done until now is simply uh, 
uh, if when you have to say like the, the someone ECG is normal or not ECG normal or you can say like someone have si is in sinus rhythm you have to check all these things like number one you have to check either there is P waves second thing you will check either each P wave is preceding a QRS complex third thing you will check how much is the PR interval okay and the fourth thing is you must check like the PR interval is constant in all the leads it's not changing okay so when all these criteria are met we say that the person have sinus rhythm right so now for example um, there is something called as atrial fibrillation okay there is something called as atrial fibrillation now what is atrial fibrillation uh, again I will show you a ECG of atrial fibrillation uh, okay atrial fibrillation is a term used to describe electrical activity in the atria which is too fast uh, like the atrias they are contracting at very 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 enormous speed like uh, 350 beats per minute 400 beats per minute like this right so whenever we get a ECG of atrial fibrillation I'm just zooming in can you appreciate any P waves of course not there is no P waves why because the atria they are beating so fast that uh, we don't see any P waves in these patients okay uh, the, the, there is no P waves here so you can see over here for example at this ECG is quite simple see what I can see is electrical activity like this right but there is practically no P wave and no two ECGs look alike this one is different from this one this one is different from this one this one is different from this one and basically the atria have so much erratic electrical electrical activity like there is no P wave seen and one of the thing which you will appreciate whenever there is atrial fibrillation that the QRS complexes they appear irregular and if you want to see this one you can see this one now in this one for example you will see what that see uh, the difference the distance between this one and this one is not same that this one and this one is not same this one and this one is not same this one is this one is not same so see this one this one is not same okay like this is you know this is a long recording this they, they 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 record lead v1 a long one to check for the rhythm and things like this so see every everything is different everyone have the differences are there see very short distance very long distance very long distance. so simply this is how um, atrial fibrillation looks like you know uh, the QRS complexes are irregularly placed right and uh, uh, in this one you cannot appreciate any P wave okay so simply when no P waves are visible so of course the patient is not in sinus rhythm right so this is what happens in atrial fibrillation uh, there is one more condition called as atrial flutter So, you know, for example, like uh, it looks like this way. Uh, this condition is similar to atrial fibrillation in many ways. However, the ECG shows like the presence of, you can say, flutter waves, F waves. Okay. So, uh, these are basically flutter waves, flutter, 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 flutter waves. Okay. These are flutter waves. We also call it as sow, uh, sow tooth you know saw tooth which is which like the um, they they used to cut the uh, big logs of uh, i will show you you know this is the saw tooth when they wanted to cut 
the logs you know they use a blade like this I'm talking about this one okay it looks like this one okay see so this one have you know this sort of so basically this ECG is uh, uh, what is seen here is like sort of pattern so whenever you are going to see any ECG of atrial flutter you will found ECG like this see it looks like saw tooth okay so this is a saw tooth appearance and uh, uh, atrial flutter comes in what you can say in different type of blocks like this one is one two three four four in one block okay which means like for every four flutter waves there is one QRS complex it could be three three ratio one block like three flutter waves and one QRS complex three flutter waves and one QRS complex three flutter waves like this way right so now the, this is uh, this is what we say as atrial fibrillation now see uh, we can appreciate P waves but what you will see like the, like no P waves like many P waves there, there's no QRS complex right in these patients okay uh, by the way it will also uh, make me to talk about the heart blocks for example because this one you know I'm talking about heart blocks so maybe you guys are confused what is heart block so heart blocks are of three types you know one heart block uh, first degree heart block second degree heart block and third degree heart block for example I will show you first degree heart block ECG okay so what is first degree heart block so simply there is uh, some block in the conduction system between the atria and the ventricles so uh, you can see like this is uh, a first degree heart block um, this one this one ECG this ECG is good but I have to I must okay so what you can see over here see number one can you appreciate p waves yes i can appreciate p waves right uh, by the way better to re see this one okay see this one this this section is good so can you appreciate p waves yes i can appreciate p waves okay there is p wave 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 right so p waves are there simply now each p wave have a QRS complex, yes. P wave QRS, P wave QRS, P wave QRS, P wave QRS, P wave QRS. What is the PR interval? Now see, can you see how much is the PR interval? The PR interval is too much increased. It is more than 5 blocks or you can say it is more than 200 milliseconds or you can say it is more than 0.2 seconds. Okay. Why? Because see the PR interval is more than one block. So it, it means like this is more than 0.2 seconds. So simply there is conduction block. The impulses which should go from the SA node to the AV node and then to bundle have his and then to the ventricles, they are taking so much time. Or you can, in simple terms, you can say like first degree heart block is a condition in which the wiring of the heart is still intact, but it is slow. The conduction is slow. That's why PR interval is increased. Okay. So the conduction wire is there. It is intact, but the conduction is slow. So therefore it is taking longer for this electrical impulse, like which is originating from the SNO to reach the ventricle and the ventricles to start contracting or ventricular depolarization okay <clears throat> so simply whenever the PR PR interval is more than six more than five blocks six blocks or more than that it is one of the feature of first degree heart block but remember like all the PR intervals are same this one is same similar to this one similar to this one similar to this one this one is similar to this one this one is similar to this one this one so they all are same right now uh, <clears throat> I will tell you or show you second degree heart block 
second degree hard block second degree hard block <clears throat> now it is you can say more severe than the first degree hard block and there are uh, basically in the books it is written two but you can say there are three types of hard block one is called as mobits type one or one k back one is called as mobits type two for example you can see this one this is mobits type one or one k back okay and i will show you how it looks like i'm sorry this one is not stabilizing okay wait I don't know what's wrong okay yes this one okay basically you know to teach you this thing basically there is a long strip is needed so this one will not do its job rather I will okay wait Um, <clears throat> I'm going to big bring the slide over here, right? Just to show you what is Mobitz type one. Okay, Mobitz type one. What happens in this slide in this uh, e e ECG? The rhythm runs in cycle number one. What happens? You can see this PR interval is equal to four small squares and the next PR interval is basically more than that you can say around six small squares or even more than that eight small squares you can say and you can see the next P wave see, see this is P wave four small PR interval is four small square and then QRS complex P wave then one more P wave but this time eight small squares then again QRS complex and then T wave then C one more P wave is here but there is no QRS complex there is a drop beat the ventricles did not contract it and then again P wave four small squares QRS complex T wave then again P wave so what will happen here eight small boxes and QRS complex and then dot drop beat so the first PR interval like the you can say the first PR interval in the cycle is normal then there is prolongation okay and then there is a one drop beat and then the cycle begin then again normal PR interval increased drop beat it could be like this like normal P PR interval increased increased drop beat so you can say after three cycles right this is type one now what is type two second heart block type two so in type 2 hard block uh, now you will see over here uh, uh, Mobitz type 2 okay what happens in this one uh, <laughs> the PR interval is constant in this one okay uh, see this one and this one are same right this one and this one are same or you can come over here this one and this one is same right the PR interval is constant but like when there is a drop beat we don't know see PR interval sorry P wave QRS P wave QRS come right and then P wave but it is not conducted then P wave QRS complex then like this way right so see this PR, P wave QRS complex, P wave QRS complex, P wave QRS complex, P wave QRS complex, but P wave and it is not conducted. So simply, sometimes there is drop beats or sometimes there is no conduction between the atrium and ventricle. This is Mobitz type two. Okay. So now, uh, some of the people they have fixed degrees of hard blocks, like you can say like uh, two into one or three into one or four into one, which means like. Uh, uh, 2 into 1 means what like after 2 p wave like this is 2 to 1 block 
like two p waves are conducted then one is dropped two p waves p waves are conducted then one is dropped so there could be three in one like three p waves are conducted and then one drop beat there could be four in one like four p waves are conducted and then one one drop attack right so that is you know second degree hard block now i will tell you the third degree hard block so the third degree hard block is simply uh, third degree hard block <clears throat> this is the most easiest one basically this is a condition when there is uh, uh, basically uh, no electrical connection between the atria and the ventricles okay there is no uh, connection between the atria and the ventricle so what happens you can say or you can think like the wire between the atria and ventricles are have been cut so we will see the p wave the p wave the p wave the p wave and if you will see like the p waves they are coming at regular interval like this interval is equal to this interval basically there is a p wave here which is buried in the qrs complex and this interval is equal to like this interval is equal to this interval sorry this is the p wave right which is coming with t wave so it is merged so this is PR, uh, this is like p wave p wave p wave p wave p wave so the p wave the atria they are beating at regular times okay and they are generating p wave but the ventricles on the other hand they are beating on their own okay so ventricles see there is a qrs complex here ventricles are going into systole and then the ventricles are going into systole right so uh, the wiring is cut the atria are beating on their own generating p waves and the ventricles are beating on their own generating qrs complex so but there is no relationship between them okay there is no relationship between the p wave and the qrs complex the both of the things they are going on their own so <coughs> this is like the third degree hard block simply there is no connection see in the first degree hard block the wires are intact but the conduction is slow in second degree hard block uh, the wires are so much damaged like sometimes the current passes sometimes the current not passes third degree hard block can be simply remembered by this way that in this one <clears throat> simply there is no connection between the uh, atria and the ventricle the atria are beating on their own and the ventricle are beating on their own then comes the cardiac axis so we ch we check the heart rate we check the rhythm so in rhythm you can think of uh, either there is uh, any hard block either there is any atrial fibrillation either there is any atrial flutter and the third thing we check is the cardiac axis so now the cardiac axis is a concept which is used to direct uh, to describe the average direction of the electrical activity in the heart for example i will show you this one uh, <clears throat> again going back to um, this representation right see uh, all this leads which are looking at the heart they are generating some vector now here of course like you need some mathematics you know you need the you have to have the concept of vector for example this lead is generating a vector like in this direction okay this lead is direct, uh, generating a vector in this direction okay negative is here positive is here so there is an arrow over here there's an arrow over here and same thing like you know uh, this lead is generating a vector in this direction for example right so simply we add them all the vectors and uh, where the final vector falls we call it as normal axis in normal heart so normally the final vector they it falls somewhere here which is called as a normal axis okay so you can say like in simple words the qrs axis represent the net overall direction of the heart's electrical activity and whenever there is any problem with the axis it could be due to conduction blocks due to ventricular enlargement so normally the average flow of the electrical energy is from the upper right heart towards the apex you know if you will see how your heart is placed in your body so you would know that you know the electrical activity which is starting from the si node it it is closer to your right shoulder you can say whereas the direction of the current where it is going it is closer to your spleen right the apex of the heart so this is the normal direction of the vector so you can see like here if i will place a person over here his right shoulder will be here 
his spleen will, will, will be here. So normally the current starts from here as a node goes in this direction. So normally the arrow lies somewhere here, which is considered as a normal axis. Now there are several methods to assess the axis. Now students, you know, they find it very difficult to understand or to uh, understand this concept simply. I will tell you one of the ways. So see, there, there are like determining the axis, there is a quadrant approach, there is a equiphysic approach. Okay, now I will tell you what I like about this one. Uh, I will go to the normal ECG now again. Uh, okay. The best way is to look at lead 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, and 3, right? And we see like either the QRS complex are up going or down going. You can see like this one is up going, this one is up going. Okay, like in V2, you will see it is down going. V3, it is down going. Okay, so we, I, I, I used to look at lead 1, 2, 3. So I see like either the QRS are up going or down going. Okay, so uh, now uh, what happens is like a good rule of thumb, you can say. A very best way to check the axis is simply to look in the lead 1 and 2. Remember guys, uh, if in the lead 1 and 2, okay, both of them the QRS complex is up going, it means the person have normal axis. Okay. No matter in lead 3, it is up going or down going. If in lead 1 and 2, if it is up going, it means that person have the normal axis. Okay. So this is the way I like and this is the way I use, you know, we, I simply go and see what is the QRS complex direction in lead 1 and 2 and 3. So if I found positive reflection in 1 and positive reflection in 2, I say that the axis is normal. Okay. So, uh, in right axis deviation, what happens is, uh, you can see over here, the axis is shifting clockwise. Normally, the final vector which we get is over here. So, in right axis deviation, it, it deviates over this side, clockwise. You know, the clock runs like this. So, clockwise, right? So, what happens in this one? Now, see, when it, it is going to run clockwise, I will if I will show you over here, You know, like these two are interlinked or interconnected. Uh, wait, I will show you something again. The same thing. So normally, lead one, the direction of the vector is here, right? The current flows in. See, the current starts from here as a node and goes in this direction. So the final direction is this one. That's why this is the normal axis. So in right axis deviation, what happens? Lead one. Okay, in lead one, if the this direct current is going in this direction, so of course, the, like the resultant vector will be moved in here, or you can say right axis deviation, right? So that's why a very easy way, guys, to remember this thing or to understand this thing in right axis deviation, the lead one will be down going. Okay, and in the left axis deviation, which means like the final vector is deviated towards this side. Okay, in the left axis deviation, the, the axis shifts anti-clockwise, okay, which means, which means, again, I will show you this one, which means like the, see, now, in normally, normal is this one, in left axis deviation, it is, have gone shifted here, so which means, lead 2 or lead 3, either one of them have giving negative vector or they they are showing opposite results or opposite direction so simply guys uh, remember this thing if you understand this concept okay if i found that lead one is up going and lead two is up going it means that the axis is normal if lead one is down going no matter lead two and three are up going it is right axis deviation but 
if lead 1 is up going and lead 2 or 3 are down going, it means it is left axis deviation. So see, 1 and 2 both are up going, normal axis. 1 is down going, no matter they are up going, down like these two, but 1 is down going, right axis deviation. 1 is up going but lead 2 is down going and lead 3 is down going it is left axis deviation. So this is how we check the uh, axis of the heart. Okay. So this is like the axis of the heart and see they are showing like this one positive one or negative one or equiphasic one right. So the quadrant approach is like examine the QRS complex in lead one and AVF. Okay, this one I found it like, I, I know this thing, but this one is a little difficult concept to uh, understand. Okay, now I will tell you this concept as well. See, uh, again, I will show you this one. They rely on two leads, see. What they are relying on, they are relying on lead one and AVF. Now I will show you why they are relying on this thing. Uh, see, lead one, vector is over here, AVF vector is over here, okay. So remember if 1 and AVF both have upward deflection, axis is normal. If AVF is down going, it is left axis deviation. If 1 is down going, it is right axis deviation. So see, if you can understand this thing, what I said, you will understand this one. Lead 1 is positive, okay. AVF is positive normal axis. When lead 1 will go negative, okay, right axis deviation. When lead AVF will go negative, it is left axis deviation. When both of them, they will negative, they go negative, of course, the vector will be fall here, somewhere here, because lead 1 is like this and AVF is like this, right? So when both of them, they have get, 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 they go, go negative, the final vector will be somewhere here it is called as intermediate axis right so uh, simply you can see over here uh, by quadrant approach lead 1 and AVF so lead 1 is equiphasic and lead the AVF is up going so what is the this one this is basically it was not equiphasic like this one is going down going more so it is right axis deviation again you can see over this one V1 is positive, V, V AVF is negative. So this is left axis deviation, right? So uh, this is how we check. So equiphasic like uh, this one, uh, uh, this one is like quite difficult. And see the, like the same thing which I'm showing you where lead one and all the stuff. So the things will become easy for you. So Now, um, the abnormalities of the P waves, like all this restriction started from the P wave, by the way, <clears throat> what we were discussing is P wave. And if I will show you again that photograph, like, you know, the normal duration of, oh, this is PR interval, sorry, P wave. Okay. So whenever we check like the P wave, uh, we check like how tall it is. Okay, we check like how long it is and we check like look at the shape. For example, if sometimes the P wave is double, we call it as bifid, bifid P wave. So it is seen in mitral stenosis. Okay, so if the P wave is too much high, so it means like there is some strain on the atria, which means like it could be uh, right atrium is enlarged. Okay, uh, so things like this. So always check that like the, when the P waves are peaked, too tall, peaked, we call it as P pulmonale, pulmonale or P pulmonale, okay, like the P waves are uh, peaked, okay, and when the P waves are double, we call it as P mitral, okay, or they look like M, okay, so P for peak, it is peaked, when it is double, so it makes M, so remember mitral, okay, so the same. So anyhow guys, like I'm going to stop here and then in the next lecture we, are, we will talk further about QRS complex, we will talk about the QRS duration and we will talk about uh, uh, then intervals, T wave, 
and then like uh, we will talk about the cardiac rhythms how we can check what is ventricular fibrillation what is ventricular tachycardia how we can see them on ECG till then thank you so much